The Sony RX10 is a mirrorless camera with a built-in lens that can shoot 1080p video with up to 60 frames per second. Just by looking at the features I realized that this camera is completely different than the usual Canon or Nikon DSLR for around $1000. Not only are the specifications different, but the image looks different as well. The sensor isn't so large, which means the depth of field will be deeper than footage that was for example captured with a Canon 70D. But therefore, the video is much sharper and the amount of detail is pretty incredible. The built-in zoom lens by Zeiss has a constant aperture of f2.8, which is pretty amazing considering the zoom range of 24 to 200 mm. The lens has an aperture ring that is variable and stepless. Today, most photographic lenses don't have an aperture ring and certainly aren't stepless. But you also have to be careful when filming because the sensitivity of the ring is so smooth that you might change the aperture without even noticing. The lens has image stabilization, which couldn't work much better. When walking slowly and filming on the wide end, the footage can almost look like you are using a steady cam or some kind of stabilizer. If 200mm isn't enough, there is also a digital zoom available, which is okay, but the image clearly loses its sharpness and gets grainy. The general downside of this lens is the zoom speed. While recording video, the lens zooms really slow and isn't much faster in photo mode. The overall sharpness in photo and video mode is really good, but filming distant objects at f2.8 isn't one of the strengths of that lens. In different situations, I noticed that the image was kind of blurry, like nothing was really in focus. The contrast and especially the highlights also look different and some color fringing is visible. These problems seem to be more noticeable when filming indoor under artificial light sources. There is a 4 time screen loop to check focus which is even possible while recording video. The continuous autofocus is another strength of this little camera. The lens sometimes needs a while to actually find an object to focus on especially when shooting in a telephoto range. A true competitor when it comes to autofocus in video mode is the Canon 70D because it has a touchscreen which is giving users the option to tip on an area on the screen and the lens will focus on that area. Since the RX10 doesn't have a touchscreen this is not possible and you have to hope that the lens will focus on the right object. The built-in 3-stop ND filter is practical when filming in daylight, but if you really want to control your aperture and want to shoot wide open, a variable ND filter is necessary. Otherwise, you will end up shooting between f4 and f8, but unlikely at f2.8. A big problem with many cameras is aliasing and moiré. The RX10 handles fine lines pretty good. In some shots, aliasing is clearly visible, but most of the time, the image just looks detailed without any weird lines. The only camera in that price range that performs better is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which also produces more detailed images. The ability to shoot 50 or even 60 frames per second in full HD is ideal for slow motion.
the RX10 can record files as MP4 or AVC HD. MP4 is limited in resolution and bitrate, so AVC HD is the better choice. It certainly isn't the best codec and the bitrate of 24 Mbps and 28 Mbps is pretty low. There is a little bit of blocking visible when filming detailed objects, but it is so minimal that the image still shines. Thanks to the low bitrate, you can save a lot of storage and record up to 19 minutes on a 16GB card when filming in 1080p. Checking focus and especially exposure is a little bit tricky, because the image on the screen seems to appear much darker than it actually is, so it makes sense to underexpose a bit. The camera even has focus peaking and zebra if you really want to be sure what's going on. The focus peaking is a little bit extreme, so sometimes the only thing you see is the peaking itself and not the actual image. Don't rely too much on that feature because sometimes an object is clearly out of focus, but the peaking still shows that it is in focus. When it comes to recording and controlling audio, this camera has everything you need, except an XLR input. The headphone jack is good to check your sound, but the best feature is that you are able to see and change the audio levels while recording. The preamps are doing a good job. When recording audio with an external microphone directly into the camera, I didn't hear noise or hiss. Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Gäste, herzlich willkommen zur Öffnung unserer diesjährigen Frühjahrs-TPMS. Es geht darum, die Servicequalität vor Ort in den Regionen zu stärken, den Unternehmen, den kleinen und mittelständischen regionalen Unternehmen die Möglichkeit geben, eine Kundenbefragung zu machen. In the last few years, less and less cameras have been equipped with viewfinders, but it seems like Sony is putting them back into more and more cameras. The RX10 has an electronic viewfinder that automatically detects if you are looking through it. If you are close to the OLED EVF, the LCD will switch off and the EVF on. You can decide if you want to use the LCD or EVF only or let the sensor detect automatically if you are looking through the viewfinder. The only downside is that it is fixed which means you can't move it up or down. The LCD is detailed and really bright, so it is still usable in bright daylight. The ability to see pretty much every setting on screen is good for advanced filmmakers, but can be too much for somebody who is just starting to shoot video. Flipping out the screen while having it on a tripod is almost impossible. It also can't be moved to the left or right. The overall build quality of the body and the buttons is high and doesn't feel cheap. The menu has a lot of options, which sometimes means that you need some time to find the option you were looking for. One of the things I like most about this camera is the ability to pretty much customize every button, so you have easy access to ISO, audio levels and other features you might need. The playback menu isn't that practical because every video clip has a low resolution 4x3 thumbnail so it is hard to judge which clip you are about to watch. There is also no option to playback a 50p or 60p file in slow motion. The ISO performance can be compared to a Canon 70D. Everything higher than 3200 should be avoided in video mode. The noise and artifacts do look mushy when filming at high ISO values. Why is that camera better than a DSLR? I think it is a better choice because it is hard to find a camera that has all those great and very useful features the RX10 has for around $1,300. When looking at cameras from Canon or Nikon in that price range, there are no real competitors. The only reason to choose a DSLR instead is the freedom of choosing a lens. 
The image of the RX10 is limited to a certain focal length and depth of field, but the zoom range as well as the aperture is ideal for most situations. The downside with lenses is that the good ones aren't cheap and you always want to try a new one. If you are planning on getting only one lens, a DSLR might be the wrong choice anyway. A comparable lens for a DSLR would cost at least $800 plus the camera body, so the RX10 is cheaper than you might think. Even if it is not a high-end camera designed for professionals, this still seems to be a very useful camera for video journalists because of the full manual audio control, peaking, zebra, image stabilizer and zoom range. The RX10 is also a camera for amateurs and a good choice to record home videos. One of the biggest benefits is definitely the continuous autofocus, which is almost essential for shooting family videos. Due to the sensor, the depth of field is definitely deeper than from the most crop sensor DSLR, so if you really need a shallow depth of field, this might not be the ideal camera, even if it has an aperture of f2.8. When it comes to traveling, this is an incredible tool because you don't need to change lenses and carry them around. Just put an SD card inside and a mic on top and you are good to go.